Hello everybody, my name is Ace Phase. welcome back to our Alpha Club missioning series. Previously, we've been using a Korax for doing some L2 missions. It went alright, it went alright, the tank was really good and the range is also pretty good. Um, the thing that I didn't particularly like about it is that the DPS was a bit on the low side, but the main thing I didn't like was actually that the tra travel time for missiles was pretty slow like it took a bit of time for it to move and also another thing that probably is equally as important as the travel time was that i was using an afterburner based ship uh, afterburner based corax uh, an mwd would have been very helpful in some situations to be able to close the gap for range so for that reason i'm going to be switching back to our mission cormorant because that's the mwd and it's also uh, we could may as well just use an mwd on the corax but uh, the cormorant has uh, this fit right here has an mwd it has also got no travel time because these rail guns hit immediately the only downside is that the rail guns here they've got a lot shorter range than the corax missiles but i still I prefer this. I think this style of uh, mission running is actually pretty good. But probably sometime we can test out a Corax with uh, with uh, an MWD to see if that feels better. But right now I want to get back to the Cormorant and see how that feels for a bit. And if I feel like oh, maybe it will be nice with a bit of extra range, then I can opt in for a Corax. Because the great thing about the Corax is that you get some extra range with the light missiles. They provide like very good sniping capabilities that uh, even with their short range like um, the Fury, the Fury missile, which is the short range ammunition, uh, even with these, you still have decent range of 35 kilometers. Meanwhile, we have the Kaldari Navy antimatter 1825 fall off, so it's not the best range. I mean, it's still decent range, but it's not the best. Uh, but we actually received a storyline mission right here. I just logged in and I saw that, oh, storyline security. Otherwise, I've not received a notification the uh, last time, at least. I can't remember seeing any notification. Oh, there, I can see a notification right here. No, I must have missed it. But every 16 missions you do, you get a storyline mission. And these are great for standing because you get a lot of standing from doing these kind of uh, missions. So we can actually do this, check what we have to do. It's not in low set. Great. Okay. So this mission cannot be accepted remotely. Go to Vesolin in the location. Ask her position. Okay. So we'll go to this location right here and talk to her. Last time we got 2.0 standing. It's pretty decent standing right there. Only 1.0 more required until we get to level three agents and the storyline will help us get a little bit of extra standing you do get a lot of standing from it but the main thing about storyline misses is actually not the not the standing for the corporation rather the faction standing which currently is zero for the Kildare state we'll get some faction standing and eventually when we get a very good faction standing what we can do is actually blitz level 3 missions or we can like very blitzed missions in general because when we have very good faction standing we can decline missions and we get a standing hit to the corporation but it's all right because the faction standing does not get hit so we'll still be able to do missions even though we decline them but there is a certain limit because they're just going to get pissed off at you but uh, oh not enough card capacity but you can decline a lot more when you have good faction standing so we need some cargo capacity right here okay we're gonna have to check that out so okay when the following objectives can be completed, uh, we'll rally the Marines and have them report to your ship immediately. You'd better get moving. I don't want to keep your troops waiting. Okay. So we've got these Marines right here. Oh, okay. What's the space here? 448. Do we have any car expanded cargo holds? Expanded cargo hold. In the system right here. What about expanded cargo hold one? Type D restraint. It is in Jita. It's very nearby. So we can just grab some real quick. Go to Jita. Actually, what we can see is maybe if there's a hauling ship available nearby. Uh, a badger. Badger could be good to have because if you're able to use a badger, then you can have a very good uh, car capacity just out straight out the gate. Okay, so there's none right here. So we can just go to Jita and just fit up a Sunasis or something cheap. Let's go there. Or we can actually dock up with the Cormorant and the L2 mission hub and just make our way towards GT in our capsule so we can not have to move around the ship anymore. Because so it'll be annoying to have to go all the way to GT then move the ship back, etc, etc. We've got some uh, various login rewards right here. So let's claim all these. We've got some expert systems as well. We've got a bit of a hauling mission going on. Hopefully good standing awaits. Hopefully good standing awaits. Dock up, please. Thank you very much. 
Are there any shuttles in this station? Because sometimes shuttles can exist in stations and they may have a good warp speed. Any shuttles? No, no shuttles. Okay, I'll just board my Corvette. Board my Corvette and undock. We have to wait until the session time has ended. You see this right here? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Okay, we can sort of think of what kind of ship we need here, right here. Let's check what distance it is. Uh, location. So it's only a few jumps. It's no, no big deal, really. So just something that is fast and warps fast. Uh, Sunesis is very good. See if we can... Because I've got, like, a Sunesis fit that's good for hauling, but it's for Omega clones. I'm not sure if it's going to be as applicable to Alpha clones. Inertial Stabilizer. Inertial Stabilizer 2. Maybe if I remove this is 2.02, .02. that's an unfortunate polycarbon. There we go, so one of these is enough to make us go below two seconds. That's great. And then we can put expanded cargo hold. Seems to have a glitch here, I couldn't see the icon for a second. Okay, let's jump to Jita. Maybe even a damage control might be good because then you'll have a, bit, a little bit extra tanky. Five men is always good to have. Like you put a red golith, a medium red golith. Get some decent tank. Maybe damage control. These make your structure hit points worse. So it's not actually that good to use a damage control in combination with an uh, expanded cargo hull. So they sort of counteract each other. So maybe we can use the double expanded cargo holes and field extender rig. Docking permission requested. Can buy this ship right here. Do not have the isk. Okay, I think I do have a bunch of stuff in my inventory right here which I can sell. Abyss loot perhaps? No. Okay, I'll have to send some isk for my main character because I do not have the isk right now. Alright, I've got the isk now. Can I buy it though? It's not really allowing me to use the game. Okay, we're back here. Can I please buy my ship now? Thank you very much. Go to nearby and the marines are there. What's to pick up? And no, we did not have our ship. And we warp off. Of course, of course. I thought I had my ship and then I just... <sighs> typical, typical. It's a really long warp as well. Proper warp of 40 AU right here. <laughs> okay, let's grab our ship. Didn't want to go in the Praxis. I wanted to go in this ship right here and I have to wait for the session timer. <sighs> I'm not having a good time right here in terms of the hangar meta right here. Okay, now we've got our ship ready. Yes, it's ready. Okay, undock. Now I was just thinking, okay, we undock, we warp to locations, thinking that, oh, we've not got the fit, so we're not able to carry the cargo hold. <laughs> let's go to Nyabainen. Okay, let's grab those troops. Curious, what kind of standing will we have after this? At 2.0 2 initially. I wonder even if it's going to give a good standing bonus to the corporation because I just know that it gives good standing bonuses to the faction but I'm not sure if it gives good standing bonuses to the corporation it just acts as a regular mission yeah it's only a few jumps it's not too bad I remember when I used to do missions a long time ago I think it was that there was a point where I did storyline missions that would take me through low sec it was a similar kind of pulling missions where I'd have like all stuff and a few jumps I same way like four jumps right here and one of the systems would be low sec so uh, I was a bit too afraid to go through low sec, so I would take a high sec route, and those kind of missions then would take me through a complete detour because it had to like go a completely different route to avoid the low sec. So like, some of those missions would be really far away, like maybe I don't know 10, 10 AU, uh, not 10 AU. I mean 10 systems plus away, are really long, long hauling missions. Not at all nice, not at all nice. So seeing here four jumps is actually pretty chill to see. Where it's like, ah, oh, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to my nearby neighborhood. To drop off these marines. 
All right, here's the station. Pretty cool Kaldari station. I like that little hangar over there. It's not where you can park ships. You can't actually go in there. Okay. Complete mission. Okay, that was pretty simple. Storyline mission done. See how much standing we got from that. Oh, we could have got basically no standing, I think. Oh, okay. So that storyline mission was not even for the Kaldari Business Tribunal. It was not even for the Business Tribunal. That's so stupid. That's really annoying. It was for this other one, this Hyas Yoda Corporation. Because you can see here it says fire and ice. That's the mission we did before. But the benefit of this is that we get Kaldari boost stand or standing and boost to Kaldari state standing. So when this is high, then we'll be able to do all the Kaldari missions all over the place. So it'll be really great, really great. So even though we don't get any bonus to our corporation standing, we still want to do the uh, we still want to do these storyline missions because we can eventually get uh, 3.0 Kaldari state standing here then we'll be able to do all kind of l3 missions across all agents and decline as many as we want so it's so still a very big benefit for, to us to do these kind of missions because it'll enable us to also blitz stuff really fast like selectively pick our missions okay let's double back up in that l2 mission hub see if we can do a mission or two to get some of our corporation standing so we can at least make some progress towards that making progress towards faction standing is good and all but It'll be quickest for us to get the L3 missions by going for the corporation standings. In the long term, it's better to go for the faction standings because then you can just do as many as you want. Do any kind of Kaldari state mission. Okay, you can swap ships now. Mission call me. The blockade. Oh, the blockade is actually an interesting mission because that exists as an L4 variant. It's a bunch of ships. A bunch of ships. So um, a lot of destruction will have to be done in this mission, I can believe. We'll see, we'll see. Warp to location. Do we have enough ammunition? It could be good to have some ammunition when we're doing this kind of mission. Okay, here we are. Yeah, it's exactly the same as the L4 variant of the blockade. It's got like a warp gate that is sort of linked to like a blockade that you have to take care of. This is some good range right here because this is all in range of our railguns. Take out that stasis tower first. Gonna make us go really slowly. We even get close to it. Now we just blap away here. Pretty simple. Oh, there's a lot of little frigates here. With a lot of ships, they're really far away though. We can maybe go for each individual group so that we don't take too much damage. Go for this group first. Yeah, so it's good. We've got a bit of snipey star right here. So we'll go to each group. This one, and this one, and this one, or whichever. This one, then this one, this one, something like that. Only two lone frigates over here. Interesting, interesting. And then we can move up here, sort of be up above these ones right here. So we're as far away as that group as possible. Like, this is where you want to have the NWD, so you can get the stuff really quickly. How far? There's 76 kilometers away, okay. Can reload. Yeah, this is pretty simple right here. Taking care of this little group. Can lock up all these guys. There's a little cruiser here. Can take a bit of time to get through. Or oh, a big cruiser, because for our little destroyer, it's actually pretty big. Facing cruisers. But it's really great that these guys are not all on top of me because I was thinking that they're all on top of me and I was going to get wrecked. Because that first wave got me to half shields and then this respawn was even bigger. And I was just like, oh no, we're going to get wrecked right here. It's really great they're not Serpentis. Serpentis are just a headache with the sensor dampeners. Just chill here. And it seems like the same thing, we're getting groups all over the place. We make our way towards this group over here since they are sort of in range we can get moving so that we're a bit closer pretty simple it seems like just three groups pulling all over the place there's a pretty decent amount of loyalty points we got here 450 is actually 480 even it was quite high for what i'm used to from these l2 missions usually it's like hardly anything like 20 loyalty points 100 loyalty points max 
Seeing 400 is pretty high. And I think it's because this mission takes a little bit of time to do. There's a lot of NPCs right here. In the same way the level 4 mission, the blockade, takes a long time to do. I think it's going to be the same case here. Oh, ECM'd. ECM'd. <laughs> a bit difficult to hit stuff that you can't lock. Oh, we're taking a bit of damage right now. I can feel the shields going down quite a bit. There's a lot of, I think it's elite frigates or something. Can't lock them up, so it's a bit difficult. And destroyers as well doesn't help. Come on, come on. No, stupid ECM. Even though it's not as annoying as it used to be, ECM is still annoying. Because now I can at least target the guy who's attacking me. Not like I'm completely helpless. Okay, seems like most of the ECM is off grid now. Let's stop with the MWD because we're running out of capacity even. Are we approaching the end of this mission? I feel like we are. Because it's taking quite a bit of time for this L2 mission. Not at all normal to spend this much time on an L2 mission. But I think that's why the payout is particularly high. Popped. Okay, never mind. There's a whole group over here. Two whole groups, in fact. Which one is closest? I think we'll go for this one right here. Just snipe those two destroyers. There's those small structures all over the place. Even though it only seems like it's that warp gate we've got right here. We've got some small structures here and there. Pretty cool environment. Popped. Hopefully no ECM now. Just want to take out these die. I probably should take out these die ones. I think that's the one who... ECM before, if I recall correctly. No, never mind. He's not in range. He's regening a lot of shields, that guy. Got some really decent resists. I think 72% resists. Oof. Yeah, look at those resists. My damage is really low right here. And they're doing a ton of damage as well. The dire ones. These are like elite frigates. See these die ones doing a lot of damage. Oof, my shield's going down a lot. And keep range on this guy at 20 maybe. If we maybe move a bit, it'll maybe take a bit less damage, perhaps. Yeah, a bit less damage right there when we're moving. You might be using missiles. Oh, he's got rail guns. Popped. Um, a cruise over here. And popped. And more NPCs. Oof, there's so many here. These waves never end. Typical blockade. Feels exactly like the L3, the L4 variant. It just goes on forever. Oof, there's a lot of damage right here. Who's doing with well, the Pitam Erasers doing most of the damage? Okay, take this cruise out right here. Ugh. He's doing a lot of damage. We can always we just keep up velocity. Because his missiles are doing less damage now. Oh never mind, they're doing a lot of damage now. We get a smashing shots? Yeah, it's good. Okay, I thought I think that I was thinking that maybe. Since we're orbiting, we might do a lot less damage. You know, it's tracking problems, but it seems like it's alright. Keeping the velocity up makes his missiles do less damage, so it's great. I think it's just when I'm sitting still, these missiles hit hard. That's good, that's good. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, in the L4 variant, then when you destroy the some certain NPC, then it makes the sound that it made. Because it made a special sound, like a crackling sound, when you destroyed the last NPC. Uh, it does in the L4 variant as well, but it doesn't actually... Uh, do it when you've destroyed everything. It's like when you've completely destroyed some NPC, but not everything in one. Like, it doesn't require you to destroy all of them. I think it might be that there are just some triggers or something like that. that I'm not aware of. In the L3, uh, the L2 one, there could also be triggers that I'm not aware of. Okay. A long mission, a long mission. A long L2 mission, at least. For L4, it might be a bit of an average, a little bit longer than average mission, but for an L2 mission, that felt quite long. Complete mission. There we go. Half a million isk. Decent. 
Ooh, yeah, that was a lot of standing right there. Do you see that standing from that one mission compared to the other missions we've done? That's a lot of standing. That's good to see. <laughs> so I think that's enough for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.